Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Happy Monday. It is May 1st. Let me flip these calendars in this house. <laughs> yes. Happy May 1st. I love this. Whew, I'm excited about May. The Lord uh, has been saying that May is going to be and an outstanding month if you were with us last Monday, um, you know that he said that he was circling May on the calendar. So hallelujah. Um, good morning. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker. I'm the executive pastor for Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. And this handsome man is... Uh, my name is Minister Al Tucker. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing this morning? Hey, Al. <laughs> um, we are under the leadership of our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. Shout out to P4HP. We had our church anniversary yesterday, and it was the bomb.com. So it was a blessed time in the Lord. Let me make sure I share this. <laughs> Okay, so what the Lord, good morning, y'all. I see you jumping on. I see you jumping on. Good morning, Mommy. Good morning, Miss Lisa. I love you, Sissy. Good morning, Miss Helen. Hey, Miss Virginia. I love you. I love you. Hey, Valerie Wright. Excuse me, Minister Wright. Good morning. <laughs> good morning to you, 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 and you. Uh, we're going to do something a little different. Today, my husband's a little nervous. <laughs> we went off script, but um, this past Friday and Saturday, uh, hubby and some of the men from the church got to travel to Missouri, Springfield. Springfield, Missouri. I just dropped him off the airport and drove off. No, I'm just joking. Um, Springfield, Missouri, <laughs> and it was called the. Strong Men's Conference. Stronger Men's Conference. Stronger Men's Conference. And so this is the second time going to it. And one of the things that I love about our church, we attend a ton of conferences. And I think in the beginning, okay, this the scripture reference when I was thinking about this last night was um, Hebrews 10, 23 that says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. So it's interesting to me that the word describes us as the profession of our, our faith because we're practicing this thing and we're learning how to do this better. So one of the things that was really important for us early on as a ministry was to go and to, to hone our craft to learn more about um, gifts of the Holy Spirit. about And not that we couldn't learn that in our local churches, but we had all grown up in church. Um, most of the people who, who are members of our church family grew up in church. My um, pastor is a PK. I mean, and and um, her hubby has been in church all his life. <laughs> Shout out to Mother Blanton. She, she made sure that he was in, in church. They met in church. So um, we have all been in church all of our lives, but we kept feeling there's got to be something more to this. And so we began attending conferences. We went to um, Southwest Believers uh, Convention because we're followers of faith. So Kenneth Copeland is a huge um huge factor and that we glean from as far as faith. He is a faith giant. So um, faith is the currency that heaven runs on. So we began seeking out conferences. And so when Hubby and I first got together, as a matter of fact, we hadn't been married three or four months. And I was like, we need to go to a conference together. So it was just he and I, and we went to a conference in California. Yeah, in Charlotte, California. And I was kind of watching him. You know how you're like, okay, this is what we do over here. Let me make sure he's good with it. And um, he had a ball. He just um, was all out in praise and worship and just, um, and we're worshiping with people who don't necessarily look like us, but um, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in Turlock, California. But um, he really enjoyed it. And, and I thought, yes, this, this, we could do this because he um, is a worshiper and he really enjoyed the conference. He was taking notes and and since then, he's been going to a lot of conferences. But this particular one, I love the energy that he brings back. So this morning, I just wanted um, 
him to share a little <laughs> bit. I don't know why he acted like he nervous and he don't know y'all. Um, but a little bit about this is a men's conference, so I don't think there were any women actually in attendance other than serving, like opening the door, putting food out, greeting them, um, and other things. <laughs> but um, just kind of uh, what is a men's conference and why Why do you enjoy it? Okay. Um, actually, the men, like uh, she said, went to Springfield, Missouri, we get a strong men's conference. It was it was just a good conference. It was I mean I, it was an awesome time in the law. It was and the thing I really like about the men's conference is when we get to go to I well other well other than we get, I get the fellowship with my fellow brothers from Pursuit. Um and even this year we created a couple of young guys with us so we you know getting them you know you know whereas his trainer child was young, then when when he get old he wanted to depart from it. So we just trying to bring him up in the weird. But what what I really like is a lot of a lot of in the strong men come, a lot of men come there who, who really don't know God, who I mean, who's seeking God and can, and they want something better for their life. I mean, they, you know, it's, I always go through a point one thing, you know, where, you know, we just, we been big down through there, you know, we need, and we're looking for something, but we might not know what we're looking for. And and, we, and it, it just comes with a lot of men found what they were looking for was really what God, we're looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was, that was, it was, it was, it was awesome. Cause I uh, had a couple of different speakers in there. And all of them were very well. And I think one of the first speakers he spoke about, um, people who were saying, are you close to God now? Have you, oh, are you close to God now than what you was before? Well, he might not really say it like that, but that would have came down to, all right, who, all right, what is, were there a time in your life that you were close to God than you are right now? So when I got to think myself, is that the time in my life where I'm close to God right now? And actually it was. It was a time when I was, I thought I was close to God because at that time, in my life, it wasn't a, it was an ideal time in my life, but that when I first came back to God, and I first put, brought my life back to God, and at that time, I think I was close to God with it, because, you know, I, I, even though I still pray and study every day now, but I spent more time with him. I spent, like, well, I, I had a lot more time to spend with him right there anyway, but <laughs> I spent more time with him. I mean, I, I, I consulted him about everything, because the place where I was right there wasn't a place for no one, but, um, it was on a dark time of my life, so I guess I spent more time with the Lord then. But what I'm getting at is, is a, it's just to see the men come together and you know, just looking for something. They, don't, they might know what they're looking for. I just see all the young, I mean, the young, young boys. I mean, you got boys from, I mean, some, some of them, I even saw one guy had his baby on his shoulder. So I don't know if the baby got in the conference, but he was, a, he was up in there. And there was a lot of young, young guys coming in and they were, and, and just see them just interested in the speakers. What the speakers are saying, and um, it was the very first night. I mean, when a, when a guy finished speaking the word of God, he asked well, anybody know what it was who was wanting to get closer either back to God or who didn't know God just come down. And it was hundreds and hundreds of men just walking down, walking down, wanting, 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 wanting to get saved, wanting to get close to God. I mean, you could. Men don't cry like a whole lot, but you see grown men just crying, mm -hmm. just you know, just. They were, cause they was they, some of them was lost. They were they were looking for things that they, they they didn't know what they were looking for, but they found it. So <laughs> they thank God for that. So you know, and I just love to see that happen. Just to see men come together. Cause come from where I come from, I wasn't used to it. I had never been to a men come from my life, and then when I got over here, men had to. What is that? We 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 we, we, we do. So before that happened, what what's up, men come from? You know, like me and my wife, you know, to to like California and um. Ibis, what's his name? Jennifer. Jennifer Ibis conference, and man, that was it. It, it, it changed my life. <laughs> I had never seen so many people come from different aspects of the world. Just, I mean, you have people come from every every state, but you have people come from out of the country mm -hmm. just to come to hear the word of God. Just, just to, I ain't just trying to find something new, but they hungry could, for God. Yeah, hungry, hungry for God. For they, 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 were, yeah. they were looking for something that they, they, I guess they couldn't get where he was at. I, and I might even said I can't get where I was at from, from my previous church or where I'm at now. But you know, you see something new just to see how people from every aspect of life come there. You, I mean, a lot of people come in, they're broken. I mean, some people come, I mean, they're broken and they, they, they're, looking, they're looking for something. Because, um, and that's, that, that's great though, when you know that you, there's something out there that's better than what you 
what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And I said, when the, when I said, when the fresh fruit told me, now you close to God, you're right now. You know, that thing, I kept thinking of the thing, you know, I was, and I thought we were, but right now I am close to God, mm-hmm. but we all can stay together a little closer. I mean, we, I mean, everything, everything we do, we need to include God in it. I mean, everything. Yeah. I love, one of the things I love about the conference, and, and let me be clear, we're, we're not saying that the conference replaces your, your local church, not at all, because you need the daily fellowship and the interaction. Sometimes you're in search of something, um, like the, the Jennifer Ives conference that he's talking about in California, they operate in the prophetic a lot. And so... Um, we were, I was growing more in the prophetic. And so this uh, particular ministry, they have it where um, they send you like a prophetic um, reading from one of their pastors or ministers. And you can either get it in advance or you can go and have a prophetic, have the prophetic, have a prophecy given to you as a conference. And so um, I've done it both ways, but I still have a recording of one of them that every single thing that this woman said was spot on. Like, it wasn't like, woo, you know, whatever. This was from the Lord. And at the conference that he and I went to uh, when we were newly married, um, I was, I tell the story all the time. I, we had been at the conference and I was nervous about whether or not he would really enjoy it. And so after we got through the morning session and we were headed to lunch, I was just so excited because he just really seemed to be enjoying it as much as I was. And so we were crossing the street, we were headed to lunch, and I heard um, the Mm -hmm. enemy say, I'm going to kill him. I don't care that you're having a good time. That's great, but I'm still going to kill him. And I was like, huh? And I mean, just this evil voice that I heard. And so it kind of rattled me. And I didn't even tell him. We just got in the car. We went to lunch and I was kind of quiet through lunch. But I was still trying to trying to take authority over those words that were spoken because it was like the enemy was saying to me, that's great that he's enjoying the conference, but y'all ain't gonna be married long because I'm gonna kill him. That's great that he loved the Lord, but I'm gonna kill him. And I was like, no, I take authority over that. But I was still kind of like shook, right? So we go back into the conference for the evening session and it starts off in praise and worship. So I got my eyes closed. I'm assuming he's got his eyes closed. We're in praise and worship and I'm just trying to pull down those words and just take authority over them. And this this um, tiny, tiny Asian woman comes and stands in front of me. She almost startles me and she said, the Lord sent me over here to tell you that the enemy can't harm your husband, that God has a hedge of protection around you and around him and that everything's going to be fine. I mean, she, I was like, <laughs> as we say in our ministry sometimes, like, you don't even know what you're saying to me right now because I had not said that to anyone. Some people may think that's a coincidence. I do not. I think it was the Lord sending him. I feel present the Lord right now. It was like I, the Lord was sending me what I needed to be reinforced and to be focused on the fact that we were on the right path and that God had us covered. And from that day to this one, we still keep in touch with her. We call her Mama Arlene. She lives in Chicago. And she just ministered to me in such a powerful way. And she told me later, she was with her church family. She was praying for them and with them, believing God for some things for them. And the Lord said, look, and she looked in my direction and he gave her a word to come minister to me. She could have held that. She could have done whatever. But what if she wouldn't have given me what I needed? And and the thing about the conferences for me is I go to conferences all the time for work. It's an intentional stepping away so that I can learn more so that I can come back and do my job better. In the profession of our faith, we're most of us when we're at church, we're working. Most very few of us now get to come in church and just sit down and do nothing. We're usually you on serving on some ministry, you're doing whatever. So you get the word, but you're getting it while you're running around doing a hundred other things. When you're at a conference, you've already taken off from work, you're away from your church family, and you're just like, Lord, pour into me, Lord, speak to me. And I think that is the getting closer that we need. It's an intentional time with the Lord. If I'm going to a specific conference, I don't just go to any conference. Like I said, I went to, we went to the one 
in California because it was operating in the prophetic and learning more about the prophetic. And I believe John Eckhart was there, who was one of my brother's favorite ministers, um, Katie Sousa, all these people who operate in the prophetic. And I wanted to be in the building to hear what it was that they had to say. And, and ended up getting blessed by this amazing woman who spoke life over us. And I thought, wow, God, um, she came into our lives at the beginning of our marriage and she speaks life over us. Anytime we're anywhere near Chicago, we let her know and she just ministers to us. So there's something that God is doing at these conferences. If you follow Pursuit um, for His Presence Ministries, you know we just recently hosted a Dream University that was powerful. Um, Minister Tomasa Easley, Minister Gianna Hansen, just it just poured into the people of God that information that they have gleaned about dreams and all of that comes from us attending different things and gleaning information. And I think this year you're going to see Pursuit start to operate in more conferences because we we've spent the first five or six years just gleaning from others and learning and really honing our craft the profession of our faith and so now in this season we've been really pouring into our men because most of them are new into the ministry and they don't know what they're stepping into but that's not so good but um, they have come into the ministry and God is is um stirring up the gift that is within them so to see them go away together godly men who love the Lord and just come back on fire. Their countenance to me was different when they got back. You could just, and, and I love that um, you can see the camaraderie. You can see the, that they look out for each other and, and it is a beautiful thing. So um, I just wanted Hubby to share about that. He always talks about the young men. I think that blows his mind too. Um, they took teenagers, like 17, 18, 19 year olds, from the ministry with them and um there were a lot of teenagers there um he really has a heart for young people and for ministering to um um men and 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 especially young men who may not have father figures um his anointing uh is is <laughs> he's hitting me under the table <laughs> I touch you. his anointing is um an abraham anointing which is uh and which is so amazing that my father-in-law's name is Abraham, but um, the Abraham anointing is a father anointing, which is um, what he operates in. I think that kind of overwhelms him sometimes because, uh, you know, nobody thinks that they're a perfect father. And I'm sure um, he wishes he was a perfect father, but I think he's amazing. But um, to be able to look out for a young man or to speak life... Um, just even the women in our ministry, uh, some of the young women, to give them a, a man's perspective on, on certain things and, and from somebody who doesn't want anything from them, just to speak life over them. So when he goes to these conferences and comes back on fire, it is a blessing. So um, anything else about the conference? Yeah, well, not necessarily with the conference. But one thing I do, even when going to a conference, you know, you always... I always get help. You always leave room for God to, yeah. to show you something. Mm -hmm. So go, you get go expecting something. I mean, you never know how. Because one thing, British Conference here, they 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 they, they, they gonna speak the word, but they have other things like monster truck rallies. Sometimes they have um. <laughs> they don't do all that at the women's conference. They have now. people um <laughs> just doing. We get no monster truck. They, 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 they had a um BMX motocross thing this year. Uh, they. They, they 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 keep you entertained in between sessions, you know. And that was I guess some with some of the young, other guys, some of the young guys, you know, they get their boots, somebody like that they they won't see that. But in the meantime, they still getting the word. Like, you still getting the word, you know. And she the scripture she had was in Hebrews, but and I was thinking going another scripture in Hebrews. It was Hebrews uh, ten or twenty four. They said, um, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. Especially now that the return is drawing near. That was the one after mine. So we read 23 and 24. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the one, because I had that hand over mine. Because, you know, you all, we, we need to keep each other encouraged mm -hmm. and everything. And that's one thing but that, that we, even when we read, me and, especially me, Pastor Kevin, and all the ministers, we go and we agree to go to the conference. We try to keep each other encouraged. Mm -hmm. you know, we said, you know, we, we be excited. We be excited when we, before we get to the airport. Then, too, it's, it's bonding time. You get to bond with the men, men you go with. Because you, it, it was a lot of groups of men who come from different churches. I mean, large groups of men. 
you know, like, man, that's that's a lot of men come from from from, from one from one from, from one church for me. But yeah, they come in, they bring they bring the, the young kids with them, they bring the young boys in there. And also, if if you a father, you know, this you get time to spend one on one time with your son. I mean, mm -hmm. and even if you don't make it to a company thing, like you know, if you're a leader in church, most churches you go to, if you're a leader in that church, you don't really have time, like she said, to sit down and hear the words. So when you get to visit other churches, go there with an open mind. Go there with a mind that, you know, God, you sitting here for a reason, so I need to get what you sent me here to get. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I need I need all of you. I mean, I don't need half of you, I need all of you, because half just ain't doing it. I mean, <laughs> So I mean, wherever you go, if you can get a chance to visit other churches, especially especially pastors, for that pastors, you know, when you get your when you in your own church, you know, it's it's a hundred different things going on. So you got to do sometimes you get to get get go get to go to another congregation, hear some more preaching from someone else. And just you know, just take the word in, just 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 enjoy your time and spend time with the Lord when you ain't got to be pressured about anything. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, we go to um. Women's conferences, um, hubby and I have been to a couple of marriage conferences, um, and I don't think I got, we've gone to any that I haven't been able to get some out of. You, you start to compare them um, in your mind and just like, oh, I liked how they did that. But even if I get one tool that we use repeatedly, then um, I feel like this is what the Lord wanted me to get. And sometimes people need to see you. We have gone to conferences out of the state and ran into people from, from here. So it's it's um, mm -hmm. it's just a blessing to be out and to be able to enjoy. And it's like a mini vacation um, to be able to get away and just to be around some like-minded people. Sometimes um, you can get stagnant, you can get stuck, but to, to pull away and have the opportunity for the Lord to minister to you, we believe it is going to bless you. So I want you to keep your ears tuned um, for some conferences coming from Pursuit. Most of them we haven't even planned yet, but the Lord keeps saying um, in a powerful way that he wants us to um, host more conferences and just come expecting to hear from God. If you put a demand, and let me just throw that in for free. Anytime the word is going forth, put a demand on the gift, put a demand and say, now, Lord, you know what I need. So, so speak into my situation. Show me what it is that I need. You can get that from anytime the word is going forth. So a lot of times we're up here as a couple, we're not necessarily always talking about couple things, but we're always sensitive to Holy Spirit and saying what it is that he wants us to say. So anything else about, um, I should know that I, I haven't, I don't think to a wife. There's one of the things I have been praying on this year is a for boldness and how, and when you know, it, one, of the, one of the topics, one of the speakers talked about this again, you know, being bold for the Lord, you know, just, I was like, mm, I did that one for me. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, you always, you always could learn something. One thing that most of them, even every speaker came, I guess, this weekend, they were going to talk about, you know, your passion for the Lord, you know. Be passionate about going and learning the book of the Lord. Be passionate about your studying for the word. Be passionate about everything you do for the Lord. I mean, be passionate about blending God into your life more than, more than anything. And, and just be passionate about, you know, getting God room to work in your life. Because, you know, we we got business schedules. And we, we all got business things. We all got a hundred things to do. But sometimes you need to just take time and just, just stop with, with the words and be still. You know, be still and listen to what the Lord has to say. I mean, and be obedient to what he tell you to do. Yeah. And um, ask the Lord, where do you need to go? What conference do you need to go? If there's a, a minister or a church family that you follow, um, just, just kind of see when are they going to be in your city or what's happening so that you can be, um, be in the building. Um, I know we do a lot of stuff over social media, a lot of stuff virtually, but it is empowering to be in the room with fellow believers. Um, I was, the Lord just put it on my mind. We went to Alabama. Was it this year? Mm -hmm. it? Um, to go to a conference, um, small conference, but oh my gosh, blessed our socks off. And um, one of the speakers was from our hometown. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. which is this big. So to, to go, we went to Alabama. I think she came from Maryland. We came from Tennessee and met up in the same city and God ministered to us mightily. And so, um, 
just make sure you ask him where it is that you're supposed to go, what it is that if it's something that he's put on your heart that you're trying to learn more about, I really want to operate in gifts in the spirit, or I want to know more about prophecy, or I want to know more about praying, or I want to be um, at the men's conference, or I just want to be around women who love the Lord, and or just whatever the desire is on your heart, just ask the Lord and then start looking for those. And when you find one, just, just pray and ask the Lord if it's his perfect will for you to go, because he will definitely meet you there. So, um, I think that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you just said, um, saying nothing to do with what we were talking about, is she said with the gifts, you know, God give all us gifts not only for the ministry, but all, you know, gifts that he wants to share with people every day. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us might not be operating our gifts right now because we might not even know what it is. But you know, that's God what your gift for you. And you should get for the you know, edify the kingdom. Not only for edify the kingdom, because once you start using the gift, it's going to bring you joy, but also going to bring joy to somebody who actually needs it. So, you know, your gift is, is much needed in the world. Yeah. And and sometimes not everybody can go to the conference. You, in the beginning, we were taking the whole congregation, but we've gotten a little bit more selective in how we do that now because it can get expensive, but especially as the ministry grows. But um, if I go to a conference for work and come back, they're looking like, what you learn? <laughs> share, share what you learn. And so bring something back and share it with your fellow um, believers and, you know, with your family. Don't just be like, ooh, that was so good. And you got nothing. That's kind of like how you ask people, I was church yesterday. It was good. What are you talking about? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> bring something back from the conference. All right. All right. Shout out again to our church family pursuit for his presence ministries. We're going to, um, just go to God in prayer. Let me just throw this in for free because I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Don't beat your husband up and tell him, look, you need to go to a conference. Mr. Al went to the conference. You need to go. You need to go. You need to go. Listen, it is just another tool. Maybe it's like him and some of his friends find a conference that they love. The Stronger Men's Conference, I believe, is every year. Um... One of the men, he wasn't there this year, Tim Timberlake. I really like his ministry. I believe he's from North Carolina. He is a powerful ministry. Um, so he he attends. Not everybody at the conference is going to look like you. Not everybody at the conference mm -hmm. believes like you. Um, so so you kind of have to chew the meat and spit out the bone. You know, I, please. I could go see a movie right now that I really want to see. And part of it, I'd be like, ooh. Let me, let me guard my heart because I know that part was in there. But, you know, chew the meat, spit out the bone. Not everything is for everybody and you have to be sensitive. The word says try the spirit, by the spirit. So when they have a whole big group of people speaking, sometimes they go off script and have some other things. But, but it's still, I want to get what God wants me to have at that conference. So if you're believing God for, you know, maybe your husband to start attending or you start attending, just start small. Um, even if you go to um, a marriage something, you know, like a weekend to remember, which is a quick little getaway kind of thing and just pour back into each other. But just, just there are resources out there. If you work um, in any type of career, you get um, continuing education credits. You go somewhere to, to learn your profession and how to do it better and to stay current and to stay up on what's happening in your profession so that you're not antiqu mm, that's good. antiquated in how you think about things. And God is constantly speaking. He's always moving. And one of the things um, we celebrated yesterday was our discipleship class, which is... <sighs> I want to say it's like Sunday school class or new members class at most churches, but it's about 10 times <laughs> more, more intense than that. Um, it feels like a college class. Uh, Minister Tomasa Easley leads that and she does a phenomenal job, but it's becoming required um, for everyone who attends our church. And again, we're ministers, we're leaders, and both of us have been through it, but it, it is it is that the respect enough to have a teachable spirit, to stay open, to not feel like I know everything. And I teach a part of the discipleship class, but to be able to sit through the entire session from beginning to end, because I remember when Hubby was going through it and um, he was talking about New Covenant, Old Covenant. I was like, where you do that? Where you get that from? I'm feeling some type of way because he gets some teaching that I wasn't getting. So when I went through it, I was like, oh, this is phenomenal. So, um, yeah, have a teachable spirit and stay open. God is speaking constantly, and I believe that he wants to move mightily in your life in this month of May. Stay 
open, stay teachable, stay in your word and stay open to what God is God is saying. All right. Uh, why y'all laughing at me? Because I said don't beat your husband up. I'm just saying. Just don't be like you need to be like Minister Al. Don't don't pray that over your husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> God gave you your husband for a reason, but just. Um, I think him being up here is an example to the men that men pray and that men go to conferences. I, I say all the time, ain't no punk in him because he wanted to... He's a manly man. But, um, but he loves the Lord and, and so it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to, to see. Um, look at Jeff Easy talking about something to teach him. Mm. <laughs> Jeff Easy trying to get an A plus in summer school. I hear mean, you easily. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, and, and even if you want to just come um, come to um, pursue to check out our discipleship class, it is awesome. Now you can go through the whole class. You're gonna be just snapping over here. If you make the commitment, you're gonna go through the whole class because she puts a lot into it. And so yesterday was graduation for us, and I, I'm still like, it ain't no, I'm still in class. Sure, it was that. But okay, um, anything else? Let me get out of here. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. So we are going to pray over you to cover your day, to cover your week. Um, I just hear God saying that he wants to download some things into you. He wants um, to speak into you. So even if that means maybe you can't get to a conference right now, but maybe that just means you need to put on some some teaching, some some um, Christian teaching. Yes, your pastor is phenomenal. That's a bless God bless your pastor, your man and woman of God who speaks life over you. But even our pastors are just like, uh, I listen, <laughs> y'all about to study to show yourself approved. So get get some word. Turn the radio off and and just listen to some word sometime. Listen to some teaching because God wants to speak um, mightily into you. And so whenever hubby comes back from these conferences, I'm like, what you get, what you get? And he's like, it was awesome. I got this and I got this. And, you know, I just, I just love it. So, and I try to do, do the same, which I don't know. I think most of them just speak it in time because I've been in the glory. When I come back, my beard be gone. Just joking. <laughs> so good. But yeah, so I just keep hearing the Lord say, stay open, that he wants to teach you something. Mm, that he wants to teach you some things. I hope to the presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Black go in. <laughs> what I specifically hear the Lord saying is that we keep taking our problems to problems. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with asking your friend, what do you think about this, girl? What do you think I should do? Um but sometimes we need to take the problem to the answer. Um, God is, is described as Alpha and Omega. He knows the end from the beginning. And there is nothing that is going on in your situation that is, is, will have him dumbfounded or confused. He's got the answer to the situation. He's got the answer about what's going on. Why is this happening? How do I handle this? How do I move forward? What do I do about this? And so he is the answer and he is speaking and you've got to stay close to him. When I say he's speaking, I don't, I, I don't mean an audible voice. I mean that he speaks through his word. I mean, I mean that he speaks through an unction from the Holy Spirit um, where some people will say, something told me not to go over there. Something, something told me to call you. Um, that something is a someone and it is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He's our helper. Even in discipleship class, we learn more about Holy Spirit and what his role is in our life and the gifts. We have gifts and benefits. You know, you start a job and you get your little benefit package and they tell you, oh, we get this and we get this and we get this and we get this just because you are an employee and because you are a child of the most high God, there are benefits that come with this. There are things that God has for you that he um, wants you to not leave on the table. Now you can work at a job and never use your benefits. Never go to the doctor, never go get your teeth clean, never use any other stuff. 
But there are other people that are like, wait, we get this for free? Because, we- oh, well, you give me my stuff. Uh, get your stuff. Stop leaving it on the table. It is a part of your benefit package. Operating in the gifts of the spirit, um, being able to decree a thing and it is established. All those things, you got to learn how to use those tools and use the resources that God gave you. And if I'm not learning that we're in the environment that I'm in, I've got to go and, and be led by the spirit of where I'm supposed to glean those things from. So we're not advocating that you leave your home church. You know why you're saying that? But we're saying is stay open, stay teachable, stay in a posture of receiving and hearing from God because he is speaking about your situation. The word of God says that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. If you're not operating in abundance in every area of your life, there's still some learning, some teaching that you've got to receive. So um, I think that's it. <laughs> He might pop off. I don't know. You good? We're good. Okay. Let's go. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, just thank for this. Thank for this morning, Father God. Just thank for a good night rest every morning, right, Father God. And Father, I just think of who you are in our lives, yes, Father God. Sir. Father God, just continue to walk with us and talk with us each and every day, Father God. Father God, for this is this the year of the year of possibilities, Father God. So yes, Father God, let us remain open to all you want us to have, Father God. Father God, let us remain open to your head for to your to your word, Father God. Let us remain open to all the teachings you want to get down over in us, Father God. But also, Father God, let us remain open to hear your voice, Father God. Father God, good words to be still, Father God. Father God, let us be still before you, Father God. Father God, when we talk to you, Father God, just we just want to be still long enough for you to talk back to us, Father God. Father God, we want you to be obedient to what you tell us to do, Father God. And Father God, doing this one in May, Father God, because we lift up all the mothers, Father God, for Mother's Day, Father God. Father God, we lift up all the ones who, not actually mothers, but who are nurturers, Father God, who, who may not have their own children, Father God, who, but help raise somebody else's children, Father God, yes. in the name of Jesus, Father God. So, Father God, we want to lift all of them up, Father God, and just continue to be with them, Father God, continue to let that, that, your love just continue to saturate your hearts and minds, Father God. And Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we have anything, anything, any sin yes. we have not forgiven, have not given you, Father God, we lay it on the altar right in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, let the word continue to go to your people, Father God. You said there's two or three gathered in your name. You was always in the midst, Father God. So, thank you for just coming in with miss. Uh, this broadcast, Father God, and this could touch each, touch each and every one heart who listen, Father God, and the ones to who will listen, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, just continue to saturate their minds and hearts with your word, Father God. Just continue to saturate your, your mind and hearts with, with your love, Father God. And Father God, let the love that you show us, Father God, we show it to each other, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, Father God, just continue to chastise us and we don't do right, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Just as so if we can get on the right road, get on the right, the straight and narrow path, the Father God, to lead straight to you, Father God. For, for, for without you, we will fail. So just thank you, Lord. Thank you for always being the head of our lives, Father God, always walking and talking with us, Father God, and giving us what we need on a daily basis, Father God. Father God, I just thank you for your word, Father God. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, Father God, who died on Calvary Cross for all our sins, Father God. And Father God, I just continue to be with us each and every day. Again, that's God's in direction, Father God. Amen. Father God, we just want to say thank you for all you're doing, Father God. We want to lift up all our family and our pastors, Father God. And Father God, just lift up even every pastor who, here, who out here this morning, Father God. Lift up every minister, Father God. Lift up all the people of God, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, watch them, watch over them, Father God. Keep them healthy, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for all you're doing, Father God. Father God, let us never forsake the assembly of just coming together with other believers, Father God. Just growing in your word, Father God. Father God, I just thank you for the, the, us having church on Sundays, Father God, having Bible study, Father God. Anytime the word goes forth, Father God, let us have a tentative ear to hear your word and just be obedient to your word, Father God. Cause we love everything about you, Father God. Father God, if I fail to mention anything, be to mention it. We declare and decree it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we love you. We love your son, Jesus the Christ. It's in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, one of the things that I said. Was that um, to put a demand on the gift. So um, while hubby was praying, uh, the Lord <laughs> was was um, revealing to me some of the things that that. Um, 
people on this particular um, Facebook Live need to hear. One of the things is um, I hear you saying, um, I keep asking the Lord um, for specific things and he's not answering me. Let me tell you something that I know for sure. He always answers. What the way that he answers is um, not the way that human beings answer. So let's say if I said, um, hubby, I think something's wrong with the car. What would you say? Tell him to go check it out. She was, <laughs> she was going over there. Right. He wants details. He may say, well, let me see what it's doing. Or what do you mean something's wrong with it? Or what happened? Um, when I say to the Lord, God, what's going on in, in my life right now? I, I just feel heavy. I don't feel happy. And I hear these people talking about abundant life. But well, what's going on? And and the Lord may say something like, um, let's go to the park. I, I'm asking you, my life is falling apart. What is happening? <laughs> you're saying, let's go to the park. And, and you're like, huh? And, and and then you may hear it again. Let's go to the park. Okay, so I'm going to throw it off because that don't have anything to do with what I'm asking. What the Lord is doing is tuning your ears to his voice and giving you direction. Um, sometimes when I ask him something, he may tell me, pray for this person. I'm asking about my situation. You tell me, pray about somebody else. It seems like, did you hear me or is you hearing off? Because what you're answering is not really what I'm asking, but it is. So sometimes in him saying, go to the park, I may get in my car and go to the park and just end up sitting there and praying. And he may reveal it to me there. there there's... Um, a level of obedience that when you ask the Lord for something, he is a, described in the scripture as Jesus Christ is described as the teacher. He loves to take everything as a teachable moment. And even though you're trying to pray the symptom, he's trying to reveal the root cause of the problem. So sometimes his answer may seem a little different. And you have to be consistent. Stay in his face. The word says that we're to put him in remembrance of his word. So mm -hmm. if you are heavy, if you're depressed, if you're fearful, if you're wondering what's going on, stay before the Lord. Stop shutting down. Stop regressing. Stop pulling away. Stop isolating. Stay before the Lord. Um, if you need prayer about a specific thing, inbox us. We will pray about it. But I'm going to tell you or we're going to tell you whoever prays over it exactly what we hear the Lord saying. God is a God who cares about what concerns you. That's scripture. The word says he's concerned about what concerns us. So he sees what's going on and he is speaking. He is not, he's not shut off to you. Um, if he's told you to do something and you haven't done it, sweetie, you got to go back to that point and get it done because it, it's like the GPS. Um, it's going to give you the direction, but if you start going somewhere else, it's going to recalibrate and keep trying to get you to the direction. And after a while, mine will say, are you still headed to blah, blah, blah? Since you're going everywhere you want to go, we still going here or you going <laughs> somewhere else because the, it wants to know where are you going so that I can get you in the right direction. And so God is specific. He is speaking. That is a lie from the pits of hell that he's not listening to you and he's not answering you. He is speaking, but you have to be mindful of the fact. And again, that comes from learning more about how he speaks and how he ministers to us, that he may not respond the way a human being would. You ask a question, he's like, oh, 4 o'clock at 3.30, 3 4 o'clock, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a, a rain money from the sky. He's not going to do that. The money that you need is in the earth realm. It says that um, men would give into your bosom. So it's not going to fall down from heaven. He doesn't even have uh, dollar bills up there. They're down here. It is the currency down here. Faith is the currency of heaven. The word says, according to your faith, be it unto you. So what he speaks to you may not be the immediate, fix it right now, Jesus, or Lord, what's going on with my daughter? Or Lord, what's going on with my finances? The Lord, what's going on? What's going on? And he's like, um, read the scripture. And you read the scripture, you're like, what? What does that have to do with blah, blah? Read it again. 
Read it again. And in that consistency <laughs> is how he speaks to us. He's trying to train your ear to hear his voice and to know what he's saying. So I curse every lying spirit. We stand against every lying spirit that's been telling you that God doesn't care, that he's not speaking into your situation. God wants to reveal some things to you and he absolutely loves you. And the fact that you still have life and breath in your body is an mm -hmm. indication that he is still with you. So don't you give up, give out, give in until you get everything that he has for you. Okay. Again, uh, we give honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We give honor to the best church family this side of heaven, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. We give honor to all of our co-laborers in Christ, every man and woman of God. Um, we give honor to each of you in your respective places. Also, shout out to our overseer, Pastor Cesar Roland Richburg, Mother Ella, and the entire Richburg family. Also, shout out to Mother Blanton. I need to see you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mother Blanton. Shout out to each of you. We absolutely love you. We're praying with you. We're praying for you. We're believing God for some great things in every area of your life. I cannot express to you enough how I keep hearing, the, hearing God say the enemy's lying to you. He is speaking lies to you. God loves you. I told you that when we went to that conference, I had left a conference, came out of church, and the enemy said, I'm going to kill your husband. And, and the Lord sent an immediate response to say, mm -mm -mm, that's, 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 that's from the pits of hell. Here's what my plan and my future is for you. So our prayer for you is that you hear from God and that you hear clearly. If you're having trouble discerning his voice or there's something that we need to be standing for in your life, just reach out to us um, um, through the church page, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries, and we will pray with you and pray for you. Also, we're going to go back through the comments and pray over each of you. We love you with the love of Christ. Expect a mighty move of God in May. This is going to be a game changer for you where God is going to shift you from glory to glory. Amen. Anything else? That is it. All right. We love y'all. Be blessed. Bye.